ENF had an article and they used their PR machine to suggest that they're looking into some litigation strategies against Block One. So let's go around the room and give our opinion on what we think about this. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll go first, I suppose. Um, I also was shocked, uh, not not expecting to see this. Seems pretty high level. I mean, this is, it's like an announcement of an announcement. Yeah, I don't know. Seems like a good headline. Obviously, there's no teeth there. I don't know why you'd warn someone you're about to litigate against that you're going to litigate against them. That doesn't seem like a traditional strategy. Usually not want to give them a chance to like, so I, I don't know if it's That's just a, good a, point. <laughs> a, a warning, like it's to just piss off their SPAC maybe, and it maybe just leading to a deliberate settlement. Uh, anyone else want to give an opinion on this? I'll just laugh at your opinions and I'm going to recuse myself from making any comments right. on this since I'm part of the ENF. So carry on. No, oh, it'll be interesting. As long as it doesn't get in the way of anything else. I mean, I don't see necessarily how it would. There's a lot of good things going on right now. And if this is just a function of some other group that's exploring something cool, you know, as long as we're not stopping the forward momentum we have, uh, it's worth exploring. But yeah, I, as long as I'm, you know, not required to build some application for this thing or something, like explore it. There's certainly something there's something there. I don't know what it is. The whole way it went down is just, you couldn't make this up. I don't know. From my point of view, I recognize that Block One has put a lot of resources into lawyers. And if any company has dotted their I's and crossed their T's, I would assume it's Block One. And uh, so I am a little afraid for the community like to go up against Block One in, in, the, in the legal arena no, all I was going to say is it'll certainly be interesting to hopefully create the distinction of like where EOS is going now. Um, I mean, I'm, like go into Reddit and just look at anytime EOS is mentioned and what people think this is and all they think it is like they think that we are the people that got four billion dollars years ago and scammed people of a bunch of money, there's this huge narrative out there that's just wrong about what EOS actually is and what's happened. And if anything comes of this, maybe it at least turns some heads and people are like, oh, I, that whole situation is different than I thought it was. So, so EOS as a network is a permissionless um, blockchain, right? So any organization can decide to pursue what they want to pursue, right? So if the ENF feels like the blockchain as it stands has not um, gotten its fair share of um, what V1 was supposed to give it, um, they can look into it and see what happens. Also, another thing is it brings a new dimension to what we are doing here in that there is some accountability that is taking place. So if people reach a business agreement or a contract with um, the ENF, which is supposed to be the legal guardian of the blockchain, they should follow through on it. Yeah. I so, I mean, it, 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 so the, I mean, there's a downside to this that it's worth talking about in one respect. So e, e, ENF is going to pay lawyers. That's going to cost money. They're, they're not going to hold EOS. They're going to convert that to USD. So that's downward pressure. If this truly is a big litigation thing, that's a whole lot of EOS being converted to fiat to pay for. So, I mean, I think there's a line where how far do you really push this? Because like you mentioned, Jesse, of all the companies to go to war with on a legal front, I don't know if a Canadian legal team is going to be able to fight a battle against Block One and their legal team and something that happened four years ago, three years ago now. I mean, the statute of limitations are probably passed, I think, in a lot of jurisdictions. So I don't know. Like Again, it's why announcing that they're looking into it. It almost seems like this is just a setup for a settlement, in which case, okay, cool. But uh, you know, that's a gamble because there's no guarantee. It seems like Block One so far wasn't even willing to send a tweet when they were up against a wall. So why do they think we're, they're gonna settle now is a bit, a bit curious to see how that goes. It's also curious to see Dan's response. I mean, this is the other thing. He's come up with some curious responses about this. And uh, I mean, I feel like, I don't know. Like, does yeah. this put him back in the hot seat? Like if B1 really does get sued, is Dan a named defendant in that suit? Block One has been sued before uh, for their ICO and uh, they settled. Um, 
I have a family member who's in the uh, crisis management industry, and uh, he wrote a book. And I remember um, one of the points in the book was when you have these large corporations, it's in their best interest to settle um, a lot of the times. Perhaps this is like a good, like uh, a high probability of settlement, and therefore perhaps a good decision. To kind of add on that, like at this point, I don't even think we know who like the people are behind any of this. We don't know what the like the entire foundation of what this legal thing is at this point. So I'm one, really clueless. The one comment that I think stood out on this that helped me yeah. understand a bit more was Zach in the uh, main Telegram chat for EOS said that the EOS, the, the 4 billion DAO, uh, you'd have to, it's, you'd have to own EOS to be a member or something along those lines. Right. It was basically, you had to own EOS. Yeah. So it'd so be the pretty EOS broad. Or the, it would be pretty broad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so let's, uh, I'm going to read some of Dan's response. So Dan had some interesting remarks about this. Uh, they clearly did not talk to Dan before they announced this. His first uh, tweet uh, is, real DAOs don't slash can't file lawsuits. Real DAOs focus on what they are sovereign over, their own blockchain state. Real DAOs don't have treasury of other tokens, money controlled by other governance systems. And then he goes on to hashtag 4 billion DAO. Well, I think what he says makes you know sense. Yeah, I guess that does suggest that the ENF went ahead and made that statement without Dan's idea that it was going to happen, or I don't know. Yeah, let's read another one. Um, so he says, uh, in order to sue an entity requires standing and must be subject to the court itself. Being subjected to a court is not autonomous. So it sounds like he's talking about a blockchain suing somebody, which is or getting involved in the legal space. And that's not at all what this is. No, he's talking about a DAO suing someone. The, who said a DAO is suing anybody right now? Yeah. Dan has a, a very specific definition in his mind of what a DAO is. He seems to be taking like a very literal um, definition of, of what the limitations around being a DAO is. But um, yeah, very interesting to hear Dan's thoughts. I mean, we are a DAO here in Eden, essentially. And we have been exploring, establishing a legal entity to interface with the traditional legal world. So, I mean, in a sense, that's the same thing that appears to be happening right now with all this stuff going on today. There's some, some analogies to be drawn between kind of what we're doing in Eden right now and what EOS and the ENF are doing. If we created a not-for-profit for us, it would be our version of the ENF. And if we ever had legal stuff going on, whether it's something like a lawsuit like this or something like more mundane legal things, like we would use that tool to interface with the legal systems. And I mean, that's what we're seeing play out right now. Right, Dan, know, does, I, Dan does not want to interface with the legal systems, the traditional. Oh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Ideally, if we have um, dispute resolution and we have governance and we have a, a way to address um, um, disputes, then you can say that, okay, if we have a dispute, we will go to this system and we'll use that system to settle, right? But the blockchain and Eden as it stands today does not have that. What we have is the legal or the traditional system, which is the court system. So the ENF is a, a legal entity. And uh, if it wants to use its legal rights to try to settle a dispute, that's what they would do, right? So I think um, DAOs are still growing and they are still maturing. We are not there yet. So until then, we have to have a way to um, have accountability. To add to that, like, yeah, if we have those systems, those will be able to, send to settle disputes within the system. But when you have an actor that's not part of the system, you need to go into the system where you both coincide, which at this point is courts. Yeah. So, I mean, someday I think we all dream of the day where the world is run by better systems. But I mean, are we going to see that in our lifetimes? We don't know. Maybe not. It's All a right, weird so collision between the pragmatic and the idealistic, I think, in terms yeah. of, yeah, you know, and some, some may argue that in the face of, you know, like some unjust system, you should take the high road and not do whatever, you know, like take a Gandhi approach or something, but, and others may argue that that would be foolish. It's kind of a decision that everyone has to make. 
in that moment.